Come on, let's give God a hand clap for praise right there. Amen. Stay right, stay right there. Stay right there for a minute, man, because I believe that when we start praising God and the blessings start going up, I believe that heaven, it inhabits the praises of his people. And let me tell you why this song hit me so. Coming into church this morning, my daughter looked out the, the window and she says, Daddy, the moon is out in the morning? I said, yeah, baby, the moon is out in the morning. She said, wait, wait a minute. How is the moon out in the morning? I said, God, give me what to tell my child. Give me what. He said, well, watch this, and the same thing goes for you. He says, for everything that appeared to be dark in your life, God says, I'm going to bring light to it. And you're not going to be able to tell the nighttime from the daytime. God is going to be consistent. Come on, let's give God a hand of praise. Like he's good all the time. That's what we come to church for. We come to church to worship God. We come to church to let God know how much we appreciate him. And no matter what's going on in your life, you need to always remember your God is good all the time. Come on, let's give God another hand clap of praise right there. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Well, listen. Listen, I don't know about you, but I'm so glad to be in the house of the Lord today. God said this is the year of favor, and he's already showing his favor. He's already showing his favor over our lives, amen? And it's such a blessing to be here. Listen, I, I want to get right into the word today. I don't want to hold you long. So good to see you out on this Sunday morning. If you have your Bibles, your iPhones, your iPads, if you would turn with me to 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter 2, and to those that are watching online, welcome. Those in our cyber sanctuary, God bless you. God bless you. We'll see you in the house on next Sunday. Amen. 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 It's so good to, so good to have you. Listen, on the behalf of First Lady, she's not here today. She's not feeling, feeling well. She wanted me to uh, make sure that I let the ladies of vision know how blessed she was on yesterday. Uh, I wouldn't hear, but I heard y'all came out in big numbers, and y'all... Y'all showed up, and you guys blessed her, and she wants you to know how much she appreciates you, and thank you for the gift and for all the love that you show her. I, I want to personally thank you for all the love that you show to my better half, amen, amen. and how much you love on her just like you, you love on me. She, she listened to her pastor this morning and stayed in bed, amen, 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 and so she wants to thank you so much for all the love that you show unto her, amen. First Peter, First Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 9. First Peter chapter 2, beginning at verse 9. You have it signified by saying, I got it. 
but you are a chosen generation. Let me start over because I need... <laughs> Somebody say, this word, this word is, for me. is for me. Okay, let me start over. But you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. A holy nation. His own special people. That you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. <clears throat> who once were not a people, but are now the people of God. Who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Can somebody say amen? amen. Listen, listen. I want to read this same passage of scripture in the message Bible. Because it really is going to undergird our word on the day. And, and, and it's really going to speak to you in the Message Bible. The Message Bible says, but you are the ones chosen by God. Chosen for the high calling of his priestly work. Chosen to be a holy people. God's instruments to do his work and speak out for him. To tell others of the night and day difference he made for you from nothing to something from rejected to accepted Woo, God help me in here somebody say that word is for me I come this morning to remind you that in this year of favor that God has selected you that in this year you are chosen for favor. So this year, I have been chosen for favor. Come on, if you believe that, give God a hand clap of praise right there. This year, I've been chosen for favor. And my favor, watch this, is proof that I've been chosen. I need you to catch that this morning. Hear this, Pastor Noah, because not only were we chosen by God, we were his first round draft pick in this season. I wish I had some help in here. Say this with me. God has blessed me, and no one can reverse it. I want you to say it again, and I want you to say it like you believe it with everything in you. God has blessed me. And no, and no one can reverse it. They may not like it, but they can't reverse it. They may not understand it, but they can't reverse it. They may not agree with it, but they cannot reverse it. God has chosen you for favor. Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise right there. Father God, we thank you today for the favor that is over our lives. We're standing here today because of your favor over us. The enemy couldn't kill us because of your favor over us. The situation didn't take us out because your favor is over our lives. Lord God, we ask that you would speak to us from the volume of the book, that by the time this preachment is over today, that your people will be galvanized to know that you are walking by their side, that you've chosen them in this season for favor. Have your way in this service today. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. You take your seat, somebody shout, I'm chosen for favor. I'm chosen for favor. Hallelujah. I've been chosen. I've been chosen for his favor. Don't understand it. Don't, don't, don't know why he chose me, but he chose me for his favor. And this season, in this year, God is going to do some things in your life to prove to you, and watch this, those that are watching you, that his favor is on your life. Last Sunday, last Sunday we discussed the prerequisites for favor. And on last Sunday we, 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 we talked about it. And one of the first things we said is, listen, if you're going to walk in the favor of God this year, it can't just be something that you say. Amen. I told you on last Sunday that uh, the first prerequisite is, here it is, you must obey God. That if you want to walk in God's favor, then you got to obey him. In this season, in this year, you can't do it the way you want to do it. You can't do it the, the way that seems good to you. When God speaks to your heart, you have to obey him. 
Amen? The second thing that we said is that in this year, if you're going to walk in the favor of God, here it is, you have to be prepared, watch this, saints, to have a faith fight. You must understand that the enemy is not going to sit idly by and watch you enjoy the abundant life that God has for you. You must know and be keenly aware and expect for the enemy to try to tear you down in any way that he can. Paul told Timothy, he said, watch this, I fought the good fight, I kept the faith, I finished the race. That lets me know, hear me saints, that if he says I fought the good fight and I kept the faith and I finished the race, that there were some things that was trying to fight against his faith. That there were some things that was trying to fight against him finishing the race. But he fought the good fight. If you're going to have favor in this year, you must learn to fight the fight of faith. Amen? The third thing we talked about on last Sunday is that, watch this, you're going to walk in favor. This year, you have to stick with his plan. You have to stick with his plan. God has not changed his mind concerning his plan for you. Even when you don't understand, even when you say, God, it seemed like to me it'd be easier to go down I-75 instead of 285. You have to follow God's plan. Even when you say, God, it, 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 would, it, it would make more sense to me if you just did it this way. God says, listen, listen, listen. Where were you when I created the heavens and the earth? Are you the one that feeds the fowls of the air? Are you the one that caused the trees to grow? God says, I have a plan for your life. Watch this, saying, and you must follow his plan. Those were the prerequisites for favor. But this morning, I want to examine with you the process of faith. Because there's a process. And, and, and I don't want you to be discouraged because we can leave church from hearing a good, inspiring word. And then when we get home and things hadn't changed immediately, we begin to think that word was not for us. But I need you to understand that there is a process. Somebody say process. process. There's a process for favor. As you go through this year, saints of God, the process is going to serve as proof of God's favor on your life. When you find yourself and see yourself going through this process, it's going to be, be proof positive to you, watch this, that God is doing something in my life. I got three steps I'm going to give you in this process. I'm going to let you go home. Here it is. I want you to write this down. I want you to keep this with you. Here it is. The first step in the process of favor is you must understand, here it is, Benita, that you've been chosen. You must grab hold of that, saints. That must be something that you embody, the fact that you've been chosen. This is not something that the preacher is just telling you. This is what the Word of God is telling you. This is what Peter is saying here in the Word. He says, listen, I need you to understand that you are a chosen people, that you are a royal priesthood. Watch this. Many are called, but few are chosen. Everybody can't be like you. Well, watch this. John 15 and 6, Jesus says, You've not chosen me, but I've chosen you. And appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. Here it is. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give you. See, well, watch this. I need you to get this because the enemy likes to try to... To, 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 to get in our mind and our head to try to convince us that we're not chosen. I need you to grab hold of this, that you are not chosen because of anything that you've done. You were not chosen because of the school you went to, because of the degree on the wall. You were not chosen because of the lineage, whatever side of the track you came up on. You were not chosen because you had both of your parents in the house. You were not chosen because you got money in the bank. You were not chosen because of what you were in. Watch this. You were chosen because of what is in you. God says, I know how I made you. Hear me, saint. I know how I created you. I know the potential that I put down on the inside of you. And even when you were living life like you didn't understand who you were. I wish I, even when you were out there doing everything you thought you was big enough and bad enough to do. He said, watch this. I looked over your mess and I gave you grace and I gave you time to discover who you were. 
That's why you didn't die in the mess. God says, watch this. He says, I looked over it because I knew that at some point along this journey, you're going to discover who you are. What you're doing is not who you are. You did it, but that's not who you are. He said, watch this. I gave you time. My grace gave you time. While you were out there doing wrong, watch this, and know you were wrong. You did wrong some days. You were scared yourself because you know you were wrong. I can't get no help in here. You were driving home scared, trying not to talk to your conscience. Like, Lord, I know. I ain't have no business doing Jesus if you let me come through. You ain't got to say nothing. You ain't got to just wink at your boy if I'm talking to you. Yeah, I know. Yeah. And he says, I covered you even in that period because I know what I put inside of you. And I gave you time to, dis to, to discover it. I, I, I gave, so somebody shout, he gave me time. He gave. And all of those that are thankful that God did not take you out in your mess, that he gave you time. He gave you time to get it right. Can we just take a moment to thank God for time? Thank you, God, that you gave me a little bit longer. Watch this. He said, I gave you time. I gave you time. Here it is, Q. He said, he said, I gave you time because I knew once I can get you on the potter's wheel and once I start making you and molding you, once I can start taking some stuff away from you and adding some stuff to you, I, I, I'm not going to let you down. I know you marred in the eyes of people, but I see the potential that's down on the inside of you. And while other folks threw you away, I put you on the wheel. And I begin to make you and mold you. He said, and I can so make you till folks that used to know you won't recognize who you are. Is there any witnesses in here that if people that you went to school with see you now, they wouldn't recognize the change that God has made? Here it is. He says, he says, well, watch this. He says, because I chose you. I chose you. And watch this. That's step one. Once he chooses you, catch this, saints, then... Here it is, Brother Arnold. He changes you. You, 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 you see the process? He, 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 he chooses you, then he changes you. See, he don't change you before he chooses you. That's why you have to stop saying, I'm going to wait till I get myself together before I come to church. I'm going to wait until I stop smoking weed, till I stop drinking, till I stop running around. I'm going to wait till I stop lying. I'm, I'm going to wait till I stop stealing. I'm going to wait till I, here it is, here's your word. I get it out of my system. Just look in your Bible. <laughs> Just look at your Bible. No, 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 no. You can't fix yourself because watch this, saints. If you try to fix yourself, then you got to be the one to keep yourself. That's why you keep going right back to the same thing because you tried to do it yourself. God would do a permanent work if you let him change you. So you can't try to change yourself. Here it is, here it is. I got to talk to the church people for a minute. That's why you got to be careful how you judge people when they come into church. You got to be very careful how you look down your nose at people. They sitting beside you and they smell like weed. They, they sitting beside you and they smell like alcohol. I can smell it. What you doing coming to the house of the Lord? Because they sick. Yeah. Hear me, saints. They've been chosen, but they ain't been changed. They come to church so they can hear a word so that they can be changed. Well, watch this. Watch this. Come here. Let me talk to you. Let me talk to you. And God said, watch this now. When I choose my people and I send my people to the church and they sitting on your row, don't you run my people out of here. Let them sit there long enough for me to change them. Don't look down. I don't care. Don't tell her to pull her skirt down and don't, don't bring no towel and try to cover her legs up. No, let her sit there until I change her. Yeah, I, 
Yeah, I, 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 I don't mind. I don't mind. I don't mind. Come on. Come on to the house of God. Come on to the house of God. I don't care what you smell like. I don't care what you've been doing. I don't care what you got. I, I don't care what. Come on. You can, drop, you can drop your lottery ticket out your pocket. Come on in. I don't care. Come on. Come on in. Come on in. Because you know what? God says, once I get you in there, then I can change you. And so people stop coming to church. They stop coming to church because they say, I, I won't be around church folk because they're going to judge me. I don't have church clothes. See, that's why you won't see me wearing suits much this year. I'm not, it, it ain't that I don't have any. It's just that I want folk to be comfortable when they come in here. I'm going to come in here with blue jeans on, my T-shirt. I may have a jacket, but listen, I'm not going to wear that. You know why? It's not that, oh, he's being disrespectful to God. No, that's not what I'm doing. What I'm doing is I'm saying that anybody can come into the house of God. And what we do sometimes is we so ostracize people. So God said, watch this. He says, he said, here it is. I chose them. They don't know I chose them. So I'm going to move on their heart and make them come to church. They think they got up and came to church on their own. But they didn't. I drew them. I got in their heart and in their mind and their spirit. And they woke up and said, you know what? I don't know what it is, but I think I'm going to go over here. God said, that was me pulling them into my house because I'm doing a change in them. So, so here it is. So here it is. So here it is. So, 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 so once he changes you, then, 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 then you, you, you can tell God is, God is moving on me. But watch this. I, I need you to catch this, saints. Here it is. This is very important. Write this down because when you're being changed, what God will do is he will get you in a place where you're by yourself. When you're being changed, he can ill afford for you to be around folk. So when he changes you, he will get you in a place where it's just you and him. I got to tell you this because I don't want you to get upset when folk that you used to hang with stop hanging with you. They're not bad people. They couldn't stay if they wanted to. God is trying to ostracize you because he needs to get your ear so he has to get other folk that have your ear out of the way. Oh, I need you to catch this. So, so he said, somebody shall change me, Lord. So watch this. So when he gets ready to change you, when he gets ready to change you, he can't have you around a whole lot of people. Because when he has you on the wheel, that when, when, when the clay is on the wheel, it's still impressionable. So you got to protect it. you got to set it somewhere until it can harden up. If you put it around too many folk and everybody else start putting their hands and their attention and their opinion on it. And so, and so watch this. So, so he, 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 he will ostracize you from people because he's getting some one-on-one -on -one time with you. And in and, and my company, and I'm sure probably with your company too, here it is. When somebody comes on board of your, at our company, right, uh, uh, Felicia, we don't, we don't give them a caseload right away because they just came into the company. So what we do is we, 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 we talk with them. We don't hire them because of what they know about the company. We hire them because of the potential. We'll teach them about the company if they have the potential. And so we bring them in. Watch this. We don't just put them with everybody, give them a caseload. We give them a mentor. We give them one person that can walk with them, talk with them, help them to become comfortable with their new identity, with their new position, with their new calling. If he listen to too many folk, he's going to be confused. So we hook them up with one person to help walk with them and talk with them. God said, listen, this is why when you come into the house of God, what I do is uh, 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 I put you in a position where it's just me and you. And I will knit your spirit to somebody. You don't know them well. But if you stop uh, criticizing them long enough to know them. You will discover that what you're going through 
they've already been there. And so God will connect you with them so that they can walk with you during this journey. Let me give you Bible to back that thesis up. Remember when uh, Paul, when Saul was turned to Paul. Remember when he was on the Damascus Road. Jesus, watch this, had to knock him blind so he could change him. He had to blind him so he could change him. Watch the text because when he blinded him and he began to change him, he didn't send him with the other disciples. Come on, Bible readers. He, he did not send him with the other disciples right away. I begin to ask questions of the text. Why didn't you send him with the other disciples right away? He said, because had I sent him with the disciples right away, instead of them getting my spirit, they would have developed more spirit of the disciples. Had they gone to the disciples right away, then Paul would not have been able to check Peter when Peter was acting funny in front of the... I wish I had some Bible readers in here. When Peter was acting funny in front of his Jewish friends, whenever the Gentiles came around, he acted like he didn't know the Gentiles because his Jewish friends came. But Paul said, I had to confront him to his face. I can confront him because my anointing didn't come from him. I can confront him because he did not call me for this assignment. <laughs> so watch what God did. Watch what God did. Somebody said, change me, Lord. Change me, Lord. Watch, 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 watch what he did. He didn't send him to the disciples right away. Watch what he did. He sent him to Arabia for three years. He knocked him off his horse, blinded him, sent him to the desert for three years just to be with him. Now, I don't know what he talked to Paul about in them three years. Oh, how I wish Paul would have written about what he learned in them three years. If he, it ought to be a fly on the wall to hear Jesus, to ought to be in his classroom, the only student in his classroom when he's teaching you them three years. I don't know what he taught him in those three years, but, but, but if I think about it in my mind's eye, I can hear him telling Paul, Paul, some folk not going to want to receive you. Paul, when you get out there, the very churches that you're building are going to be the very churches that reject you. Paul, when you get out there, the, the, the very apostles that I'm sending you to help are not going to want to receive you. Paul, now when you get out there, they're going to always remind you of your past and what you used to do and where you used to go. Paul, I listen to me now, Paul, because there are going to be some days that you're not going to want to get up. Paul, there's going to be some time that you're going to be helping other folks' house get healed and your house is going to be in despair. But Paul, when you go through it, always remember who called you. Always remember why I called you. Is there anybody in here that when times get hard, you remember who called you to the assignment? He said, Paul, listen, don't you get out there and stop doing what I called you to do because somebody rejected you. I need you to spend some time with me so that if everybody else leaves, you know I'm still there with you. <laughs> and so watch this. He says, he says I, I got you there, Paul, and I'm going I'm to change you. Here it is. So, so watch this. I'm almost done. So, so, so he, 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 he chooses you. Somebody say, choose me. Choose me. Change, me. change me. Here it is. The last thing he does is then he charges you. He don't save you. For you to get saved, for you to get blessed, and for you to just sit in your big house, watch your big screen TV, and not tell anybody what he did for you. Let me talk to this side over here. He says, once I choose you, once I change you, then I charge you. I need you to raise your right hand up in here. Said, Father, send me and I'll go. When you have been charged, 
what charging means is now you have a duty and a responsibility to do what it is I've called for you to do. I did not save you for yourself. I saved you for you to work for me. Do I have anybody in here that's willing to honor their charge this morning? Here it is. It's right there in text. 1 Peter 2 and 9 says that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into the marvelous light. Let me give you this. I'm going to let you go. Here it is. See, I need you to hear this. Lean to your seat because this is the piece the enemy don't want you to know. When you are charged, you are given power and authority. The enemy cannot take your power and he cannot take your authority. So what he does is try to get you to devalue it so you won't use it. Oh, God, I wish I had. He, 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 he can't take it. But if you don't put a value on it, you won't use it. That's why he run around in your house trying to tear your house up because you don't understand you have power and authority to cast that demon out your house. That's why you run around with sickness in your body. You are walking around with the potential to do things and you're not even using the potential that you have. You're allowing the devil to do stuff in your house when all you have to do is speak to that devil and say, as for me and my house. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. So, so if, 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 if you know you have this authority and this power, when was the last time you were dealing with a situation and you anointed yourself? Come here. Come here. Instead of complaining about what your husband doing or what your wife ain't doing or what your children are doing, when was the last time you called all your kids in the room, got your anointing on, and began to anoint them and say, in the name of Jesus, you shall be what God has called for you to be. I don't care if they smell like weed. I don't care if they just getting in the... When was the last time? When? 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 When, when was the last time you used your authority? The enemy has caused you to devalue it. And so now you're walking around with it and you won't even use it. When was the last time you took your oil out and you anointed your account? And you said, my father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. I am his child. It is not his will for me to rob Peter to pay Paul. When was the last time you walked around your house and you anointed your own house and said, everybody that stepped foot in this house, God is going to bless. Here it is. Here it is. I need you to understand your power. I need you to understand your authority so you understand when you're going through something, you don't need Pastor Luke to come to your house. You don't need deacon so-and-so to come to your house. Use your own authority. Speak over your house. So here it is. Here it is. Somebody say, this year, this year I, will I will use, use my, authority. my authority. Here it is. Here it is. I'm almost where I'm going. Give me five more Baptist minutes. I'm gone. My daughter can do things with my cell phone I can't do. It messed me up. It just, just, she just messed me up. One day, me and my wife walked in, the, in our room, and she was in there watching a the little YouTube channel. And all of a sudden, she was able to cast the YouTube onto the TV. She's six years old. As a matter of fact, she was five when she did this. I looked at my wife, she looked at me. She was like, what are they teaching this child at this school? <laughs> and so watch this, I'm going somewhere. So I asked her, baby, how'd you do that? She said, oh, dad, it's just, you can do it on your phone, just take your phone. And so I took my phone out and I started trying to do it and it wouldn't work. She said, give me the phone, daddy, give me the phone. <laughs> I gave her the phone, just doop, 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 boom. 
I said, wait a minute, baby, how you doing? Don't worry about it, Dad. I get it. No, 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 no. Watch this. I'm going. Watch this. I want you to show me how you did it. <laughs> because I'm a grown man. <laughs> I bought this TV and this phone. <laughs> and it would be a crying shame that every time I want to use it, I got to call you. Y'all missing it. Y'all missing it. So I need you to show me how to use what I already got. I can't keep walking around with all of this power in my pocket. And whenever I want to use it, I got to, I'm talking to somebody in here today. It's time for you to start using the power that God has placed on the inside of you. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, use your power, use your power. Use your power. Use your power. Here it is. I'm done. I'm done. Somebody say, this year, I will use my power. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Give me. Be seated. Give me two more minutes. I promise I'm done. I got to use it this year. I got to use it this year. Here it is, Pastor Bo. Here it is, Pastor Bo. I ain't going to worry about it. I ain't going to worry about calling nobody else. You know what? <laughs> Do you have a closet? <laughs> I just need to get to the closet. Big Mama used to say, my, my old school saints, the young folks, y'all don't know nothing about this. But Big Mama used to say, if I can't get the doctor, do you have a closet in the house? Because if I can get to the closet, I can call down power. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. This year, I will use my closet. Here it is. Here it is. I'm done. I'm done. Because you have to understand. You have to understand. The power is not in what you see. The power, saints of God, is in what you can't see. Here it is, Brother Ricks. It's in here. As nice as these walls are. Watch this. Watch this. This building is not being held up by this sheetrock. The sheetrock is too weak to hold up this building. Am I right? Hey, Crawford, am I right? Here, here, it is, here, it is, here it is, Pastor Noah, because it looked good. But it can't hold up nothing. There's some steel beams that you can't see. That's some, some, some load-bearing beams. That anybody that walks in here, they can't see it. But every time the wind blows and the storm comes, it's not being held together by the sheetrock. But there are some beams that's in the foundation. I want you to understand that your charge that is fortified by the word of God is going to be your steel beans this year. It's going to be what lets you stand when everybody else walks away. The reason you love those that don't love you back is because you got your steel beans. Do I have any witnesses in the house? Stand to your feet. Stand to your feet. I got to let you go. I got to let you go. But there's some power in this room right here. It's enough power in this room to change all of the school systems in Clayton and Henry County. It's enough power in this room. Here it is. And this year, we're walking in our favor. My prayer is that God give you no rest. until you honor your charge. My prayers that God give you no rest, give you no peace, until you honor your charge. I went to the doctor a few weeks ago. And I just went to get a routine eye exam because I needed a stronger prescription. And when 
and I was sitting in there. The doctor did the exam on me, and he called me to the back. He said, Mr. Hall, we got to do a laser surgery on your eye tomorrow. I said, what's wrong? He said, there's pressure built up behind your eyes. I said, but I don't feel bad. He said, no, you, you, you don't feel it right away, but it's there. And if I don't do a surgery to, 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 to ease the pressure, it's going to damage the nerves in your eye, and you'll lose your sight. He said, it's in an acute stage. It's bad right now, so I got to do it. I got to do it ASAP. I said, wait a minute. Let me call somebody. I need... <laughs> What's this? He says, I give you one day. Come in because I got to, I have to help you to keep your sight. Because if you don't do something about this pressure, you're going to wake up one morning and you won't be able to see. I'll come tell you something this morning. This year, you got to alleviate the pressure. God has given you another year. And if you're going to see the favor he has on your life this year, you have to alleviate the pressure. If you don't alleviate the pressure, you will lose sight of the vision. You will lose sight of why God saved you. Why he kept you. You got to alleviate the pressure. The pressure to please other people. The pressure to always be right for folk. The pressure to always be all things to everybody. The pressure to be liked by everybody. The pressure for everybody to be fond of you. You have to alleviate the pressure. So you can recognize the favor. I want every head bowed in this place. Father God, I thank you for these, your chosen people, these that are standing in this place this morning, those that are watching online, Lord, these are your chosen people. Allow them to see how special they are to you. No matter who's hurt them, no matter who's broken their heart, no matter what they're lost, let them see that your love and your favor has been with them the whole time. And Father God, when they see it, remind them of their charge. Remind them that you saved them for a time such as this. Give them no rest, Father, until they do what it is you created them to do. Let them become familiar and use the power and authority that they have. We decree and declare that in this season we shall take our anointing oil out and we shall anoint our bodies. We shall anoint our children, our marriage, our home. We know that the power is not in the oil, but the power is in your word. And so we will stand in it this year. So we will see your favor. We believe it so. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise all over this building. Pastor Lee.